busy lives we're all leading. I think we all need a bit of peace and tranquility, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely, Charlie. And you know, the best place to escape all of this noise, hustle and bustle, is your very own back garden. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to team up to create a little piece of paradise. And I've got to say, this makeover is very dear to my heart. Ooh, shall we? Let's go. All heart and sleeve, take myself so seriously. Leaning in, I am what you see. Good morning, Maisie. Hello. Morning, Graham. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Hello, Excellent. Charlie. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. What a wonderful little spot. Yes, it's, uh, it's very, <laughs> very simple. It's a small little place. So what would you like here, Maisie? Um, something where I don't have to do any maintenance. Mow it, mm -hmm. do the edging, you know, every two to three weeks. Yep. Um, yeah, so all of that takes time. Um, something which I don't have. Mm -hmm. um, I would like a Japanese garden. Okay. Um, you know, I've always wanted one because whenever I visited, like Kaura, the Japanese gardens there. Yeah, Kaura. Auburn, Gosford. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just so tranquil and beautiful. Okay. Um, very, very peaceful and calming. So mm. that's what I need at this stage in that's my what life. We all need that. We all, lives. We all need that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure we can come up with something that'll Absolutely. really suit this little spot here. Yes, Graham, that's exactly what I would like. <laughs> got behind here. <laughs> well, it'd be a nice little spot to store things. I mean, Maisie's already started. She has. So if we just get this nice and level, bring the pots in here, and then we could maybe use this for a gate rather than a screen before, and then it becomes usable. The Graham. Cleared it out, mate. It has indeed. I'm thinking every good Zen garden needs a place to relax. So how about a couple of overlapping decks? Maisie also mentioned she was really into having a water feature. Yeah. I think down this little corner here. Maybe in this area, we could do some stepping stones, some boulders and some gravel. Yeah. And some real feature plants. How about a nice mm. Japanese maple down the back here? And Camellia Sasanka was just to sort of tie yeah, it all in. Yep, it's going to be nice. Absolutely beautiful. The start of our decking is this framework. Now, I'm using a treated pine sleeper because it's H4, which means it can touch the ground and it won't rot away. Then the rest of our framing can go on top. Once I've got this in place, I'll dig some holes and we get some posts in the ground. I'm tired. When it comes to concreting posts on decking, you want to make sure you get concrete all the way around the post. You can see there's good clearance around here. And you also want some underneath the post. That way, it's going to encase it and it's going to be much stronger. Now, while Charlie's working on the deck at the back, I thought we'd take the opportunity to get some of these Rocks in. Thank you, lads. That's brilliant. OK, now we've got a couple of these to go in. So the stones are really important. Looks like a rock to me, Graham. Yeah, I've got to work on Charlie a little bit more on before we finish this garden. Now, we haven't blocked off any of the flow through because you've got energy flows right through between all of these stones going through up under the deck where Charlie is. As a point of difference and to add some textural interest to this top deck, I'm laying the decking boards on a diagonal. Now, when you're laying your boards, you really want 450 millimetre spacings between your fixings. When you're working on a diagonal, you need to put your joists closer together because the distance gets longer as you lay them on the diagonal. Now, I'm going to overlap them on the edge and cut them after. That's going to make it much easier. Believe it or not, these are concrete. And they're just a beautiful random shape. And you can get these at your landscape suppliers. They're just perfect for this sort of job. But the colour is really important. We've got the grey coming off down the steps and then up to Charlie's deck. It also 
illuminates our limestone here. It really lifts it. So when we put the planting in later, the grey will really recede back. Our stones will stand up. So it's looking really cool, man. Thank you for this. Well, that's the structural elements of this garden done, but I've got to say, Graham, it's not feeling very tranquil, is it? You're not getting tranquility? Not yet. Well, I've got a piece of 4B2 in the car that'll bring that to you, but... So I'm going to be building a double gate to completely screen off all the plants, but I want it to be in theme with the garden. The first step is to build a frame, so I've pre-cut some timbers. I'm just going to screw these together. Got my drill, got some bigs. Now, a really important step of building a gate like this is to put a cross brace in it. That's going to stop it from twisting and from dropping, especially when we put some cladding on it. So I just put the angle brace on like this. I'm going to attach it in. Once that's all done, I'm going to give it a lick of stain to match the depth. So to make our screen into a gate, we need one vital component, hinges. And these ones happen to be called gate hinges. Now, you may remember this lattice from the previous screen that was in the garden. Well, I've just cut a rectangle out for the top of our gate. Across the bottom, though, we've got this great bamboo screening. This is an off-the-shelf product. It's going to give us the screening we need, but it fits in with the theme perfectly. Just going to screw this down, bit of a pre-drill first. Every good gate needs a good handle. And I'm using a piece of bamboo and some size or rope that I'll just thread through. And then I'm going to drill two holes, thread that through and tie a knot in the back. I think that looks pretty fancy. And that's all it takes to build a gate. Now, we've got quite a large area, so I've built two, and they're going to open inwards so they don't interfere with the tree. To add to the tranquil feel, we're connecting up a simple water feature. So the water will flow out of here. We have the connection down the bottom, and it just connects straight onto the base of our reservoir of water and adding some lava stone to disguise the reservoir. Go for it. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Graham, I love the water feature. Isn't it cool? It is really cool. It's just, it's just all, now that it's working, I'm just sitting here contemplating how beautiful it really is. And then along you come with another addition, man. This is awesome. I know I've been saying to you that there's been lots of just rocks in this garden, but it is looking really cool, you isn't like, it? You like my rocks? Yeah, I do. Especially this one with a bit of bling, putting some lighting in. And this is the same granite as you have in that water bowl. Yeah. So, you yeah, can't really nice it. touch. Now, would you call yourself a Japanophile? Is, it, is that what you call yourself, like the Francophiles? <laughs> <or> the... <laughs> I suppose I am, you know, 60, 70% of the plants we grow in our gardens are from Japan. You know, the azaleas, the rhododendrons, a lot of the ornamental grasses and things that we grow, um, they all come from Japan. I thought, oh, well, it was the plants that drew me there originally. Oh, what a feature tree, hey, Graham? A ripper. It's just going to be beautiful in this corner here, Charlie. Yeah, the coral bark maple, I mean. You can see when the stems hit the light there, how they just illuminate. They're amazing, aren't they? It's a great maple. Fantastic to have in a garden. Oh, beautiful. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Now, the one thing you'll notice in all gardens in Japan, at some stage, there'll either be moss or mondo as the alternative for grass. The black one 
just suits this landscape perfectly. To give us a green backdrop to our deck, I'm using one of my favourite camellias. This is a slimline variety called Avalanche, and they flower for absolutely ages. Now, being a slimline camellia, it's perfect for a tight space. It's going to completely get rid of that fence and transform this garden. I'm using Raphaelepsis Oriental Pearl. It's tough as old boots. You could pretty much grow this thing on a boat. But to top it all off, it just forms lovely clouds. It's going to add a fantastic, tranquil, zen quality to this garden bed. And I've got to say, I was teasing you about the rocks a bit, but I'm coming around to this whole zen garden. I like it. Peaceful, tranquil. I knew, I knew it would win you over. It's a very powerful concept. Yes. Just in time for the Olympics, Charlie. Yes, but it doesn't matter what we think, does it? This is a garden for Maisie. Should we see what she thinks? Wow! This is amazing! Yeah. What have you done? Where's my garden? <laughs> Lawn's gone, <laughs> and Lawn's that's gone. what you have left. Oh, this yeah. is beautiful. Absolutely perfect. Oh, my gosh. So, up on the deck, I thought it'd be really nice to have a nice wide step so yeah. when You've got your grandchildren here. You can sit here and enjoy the water oh, feature with them, as well as will. your own space to come and relax. Oh, wow. And the tea for me as well? Uh, we made all this garden just for the tea <laughs> just Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, the bamboo gate. But I think it's one of the prettiest gardens we've ever done on Better Homes. I just love the atmosphere, and I hope you do too, mate. I do. I just love it. Now, Graham, tell me about the rocks. I know it's very important in Japanese landscape to yeah, have well, the, the, the placement. The placement of the rock still allows all the air and the energy to flow through, yeah. the water, the sound, the sight, a beautiful lantern at night. Yes. So it all combines to be a very tranquil place to be. In fact, in Japan, we would say this is Utsukushi. Which is? Beautiful. Perfect. It is more than beautiful. There's Amazing. no words for it. All this dreamt of a Japanese garden. Now I've got it here.